Hey YouTube, welcome to part 7 of the Front End Raider build. In this episode we're still building the arms and by the looks of it we will be in the next episode as well. I originally didn't plan to put forms in the arms but it turned out I needed to to pull out the wall feature that I got when I welded them together. Anyhow, talking about it not getting the job done so let's get on with it. Now I'll just try and explain what I'm doing here. I've clamped the side here to the welding table or at least to one of the slats because the slats are movable so clamping it to the tables pull that down nice and tight onto the slat and I'm pretty sure that won't warp it's half inch thick 12 millimeters and then I've clamped a piece of angle iron onto the center of that to provide me with a vertical reference and then I'm taking one of these formers and placing it in there making sure that it's nice and flat down against the face of the sheet metal and I'm going to clamp that in with a vice grip I'll need both hands for that so I'll just put the camera down for a second got that clamped in there with the vice grip now I'll just give it a little tap down just to make sure I can see no gap underneath and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a tack on each side of that against this 10mm by 10mm and once that's held it, I'll run a short bead across the middle of it. The short bead across the middle of it, not going to hold anything much. The whole idea is just to keep this in place so that I can use it to pull both sides of the arms straight. How it's lined up across here, doesn't matter if it tilts back this way or that way, it doesn't have to go straight across. It's gap top and bottom, so that any moisture that accumulates in will be able to run out. So I'll get the welder prepared and put the tacks on that. Well, it's ready, it doesn't matter what sort of rod you use to tack this up with. It's non weighed bearing, it's just in there to make sure we can get the shape formed. And apart from the fact that they'd rattle around, it doesn't matter if they fall apart after we get the outside seams welded. I really don't want them rattling around in there. It'll just concern me every time the arms move. So when you're putting these ones in around here, make sure that you can leave enough gap around the hole that you can get the cross member through. Pretty obvious, but never hurt to say it. My original intention was just to weld these on on this one side and perhaps tack them onto the 10 mil by 10 mil bomber on the other side. But because of the amount that I had all the sides in to make everything straight again, I ended up deciding to weld them across on both sides and this has worked out fairly well, even though it's a little bit in the future from this point in the video. That should explain from that angle what I meant by not having to be straight up and down, they can be at any angle. The only view you'll ever get of them is if you look straight up the barrel of the hollow section and you'll only see as far as the first one. If you want it to be really, really neat, you could cut one precisely and stick it across in there. And that's the longest bit you can pull out of your faggoted welding rods, you know you're down to the dream. 1994 they were made, so that makes them 24 years old. They still work fine, or did work fine, they were all used up. Now I've got to go pay money for some more. I 
I'm going to finish building this for 78, you know, I'm saying we do toes and then two and a half new rods I've got and I want to get it done. Now I almost made it blue. I've got all four pieces of this clamp back together because I've already got two of them with the 10 by 10 bomberons on them and one of them with the formers. I've put them back to back on the outside. I've got the other two on the inside. I've got pins to line them up. And the reason for all this is I forgot to grind out the hole for the cross member so that they all match up. I want to do them all together. I want them all exactly the same. So that's what I'm about to do now. And to assist me in accomplishing this feat is my favourite little bear grinder tool and my safety glasses. You see how quickly this thing rips into the metal, sure beats the heck out of a file. The worst thing about these retracting hazers, they don't stop where you drop. I put the big grinder in and just give these long edges just a little more. But they're still a little bit rough and it's just a bit of resistance going through. Oh, that's better. It's got a beautiful nut plate there that's welding. There's only 3 mil metal that I've got to weld. So there's a nut for gap there to do a decent fill to us. That will be perfect. One of the things I've got to do next is to knock the corner off these because I've got weld bead along the corner of this top piece. So the first thing I'm going to do, put it on just fairly roughly where it's going to go. Something like that's near enough. I'm just going to go along and mark on here where these sit. Transfer these marks to the top here so I can see them once I lay it flat. I only need an approximate mark. I just need to get an idea of where I need to put the bevel and how much bevel I need to put on it. These are going to be a little bit more severe down here. Not much at all there or there. I think I'd do better just doing stitch welding on the other side. Now comes the laborious task of fitting and adjusting. I need to mark the problem lines. Okay, now that I've gotten this far with it, it won't take more than another fitting or two to get it right, I think. I'd best stop and weld these other pieces in to this side. Knock a little bit of a slag off it from where it was plasma cut. Not too bad. Well that one's pretty much right except that I need these these corners where it's up against the wells. That will do him quite nicely. Just need to ease that in there a little bit. Yeah, that's definitely that. Okay, it's got him prepped. And I think fairly nicely in place there. Fire up the uh, welder now and get those two pieces welded on. Knock the flux off them and I'll put a weld across the end. Fast weld across the end because I'm welding quarter inch plate to three mil plate. Don't want to burn the bottom end, and that should do him. Just enough heat to bubble the mill scale. That uh, should be all right. Couldn't have got any less heat through it anyway. All right, I've got the two sides of one of the arms all set up, ready to weld. 
Because they warped more than I expect them to when I welded the two longerons on the sides, I have had to pull that out. So that explains all the clamps that are on there. I can see all that quite clearly. And all those clamps are pulling the warpage out, making sure that everything is really down tight, particularly that all these formers are pulled in, they're welded to this top side and I've made sure they're all pulled down to the bottom. Because my table's not finished, these slats aren't welded in place, so I've got some clamps that actually do both jobs, hold the slats down and hold this down as well. That seems to be working all right. I expect to be able to weld this up without any dramas. A couple of things I want to make sure that are very clear on this because they can get you into trouble if you miss them. And I think you can see that there. That's the bush for the business end of the arm. That's the one uh, seven eighths of an inch pin goes through it. That's 22.2 mils. And if you can see that in there, that's the bush for the tractor end of the arm. And that's got the 25 mil hole in it. Just to be clear, that bush doesn't come all the way through the sides. It's retained by these quarter inch plates in here which it does go through and the bush itself is exactly 65 millimeters long to match the caps that are going on the outside here. The plan now is to go through and weld these formers in, just a little tack on the 10 by 10 mil longer ones and I'll put a quick bead, a very quick bead across the bottom of the former. Once they're all welded, I'm hoping that without moving the clamps too much, I can actually do something about getting the top and bottom on this and at least get them reasonably well tacked in place. And that's mainly out of fear that it's going to warp again. If they're tacked in place, I can't see it going to be able to move anywhere. So I want to tack them if possible before I move anything. That's the plan. We'll get to welding in a minute. Thanks for taking the time to watch this video. I do hope you enjoyed it. We'll continue the build in next week's episode, and in the meantime, if you'd like to see more of my projects or reviews, you can go to my channel or browse to my website. Don't forget to click like, comment and subscribe. Until next time.